welcome to Utah's Fly Corner. I'm going to show you how to tie a little olive fly I use. Uh, it's basically kind of like a cat skill. Uh, it's a, a fishing fly, so I don't get too uh, too crazy. Um, it's making everything all fancy and neat. Um, it catches me plenty of fish. Uh, show you how to tie it. Hook I'm going to use is a size 18 dry fly. Uh, this one I'm going to use a saber. That's what I got handy here. Well, sabers aren't uh, the most expensive hooks. They're also, um, you know, it doesn't mean they're not uh, pretty good quality. They are. I enjoy using them. They uh, they catch fish, just like the high-end hooks. The uh, thread I'm using is Uni Light Olive. Love this color thread and an 8 dot. I'm going to bring it back about three quarters of the way. And I'm going to bring it up about a quarter of the way. It's going to give me my mark for my wings. Now for the wings, I uh, use Mallard Feather. Um, you can if you want, like, if you want to make it a hell of a lot easier for the fires to like stay together and that stuff, you can spray these, and coat them. Not with something that's going to uh, spray them like hairspray, something that'll just come right off once uh, once you hit it with some water. Um, you don't want anything uh, that's going to going to cause the fires to stay together because then it's going to um, it's going to be wind resistant. And the air is not going to be able to flow through. Uh, for a size 18, though, you want to. Um, what I'm actually going to do, um, I could do the the left and the right, uh, but what I'm going to do is fold, line the fibers up, and I'm just going to pinch them, tear them off. And you can see the points are already all fraying apart and everything else. But I'm going to be catching fish with this fly. I'm not looking to catch any fish around with it, so that doesn't matter. Now, for a wet fly, you would fold it inwards so that the wings touch, but it's a dry fly, so we want them to be away from one another. So let's fold. Check my fold. Let's see how we're doing. You can help the fibers to marry back together, the ones that want to anyway, if you'd like to. Measure my wing. I like to try to get the full length of the hook shank, but as long as it's in that general area, it doesn't really matter. But right against the shank. Pinch and loop. Make sure you don't catch your other fiber on the way down. Pinch, loop, pull it straight down. One more. Pinch, loop, pull it straight down. One over, tighten it up. See how they're sitting? Tighten up. I like to lift them. One, two, three, four. Right in front. You know they're doing. They look pretty good. Trim these guys out on an angle. A little bit of an angle. I don't need much. They can just leave it like that. I know it's messy looking. I need the best looking set of wings. Um, but you can uh, you can separate them. Push down the fibers, get them to cause them to start separating. Then you can throw a figure eight in between them and get them separated. And lift them up again and come around. And then cover your butt end up and bring your thread on back. 
see we're in line with the board. A little far. Uh, the tail I like to use is a cock de leon. Uh, medium pardo. It's a little uh, light, but the fish seem to like it a lot. So. Can we use micro fibbits? I have before, but I don't know. I, got, I like using natural material. Got our tail clamp. I want to be about the size of the body, length of the body. Grab it in. Take one loose turnover. One more tight turnover. I throw them down underneath. Come up. Come over. And then wrap up. These guys up. Clip them right up against where your butt end from your wings was. Now we're going to dub. Now the dubbing I use uh, on this uh, fly is uh, olive snowshoe. Um, I just pick out like all the underfur. I cut off a clump from the foot and then I just separate the guards from the underfur. And the underfur is just as water resistant as the guard hairs are. I'm gonna dub a little bit on here. I'm going to go crazy. This is a small fly, remember. I'm going to hang back. Tighten up my dummy. Got way too much on there, but it's okay. Snowshoe comes off the thread pretty darn easy. Oh, hit the can. Back it up. See our wings are already fraying apart, but fish don't care about that. Okay, now my hackle, if I can find it. Um, with uh, when you're tying classics, um, it's best to have the hackle one and a half times the the gap on the hook. Um, but I, I like to go a wee bit short with it. Um, I find that it uh, balances the fly a little bit better. And offers uh, just a little bit better. Plus, that's pretty much the way I always tie them. So. But what I'm doing is I put the stem. A little too much fibers in there. Put the stem in between the wings, catch it in the front, catch it one turn in the back, stand your wings back out for the turn, and leave your thread right there. Now when I wind, I'm going to go one turn immediately in the back of the wings, and one turn wrapping backwards, then I'm going to go one turn coming up, grab my wings, one turn, complete turn right in front, and that is it. I do not put a lot of hackle on these flies. Catch him in. When you tie down your hackle, if you if you hold it up, it'll it'll cause those stray fibers to stand up for you. So when you snip them, get in there to clean up, you end up with a nice clean clean front side. You don't have any trap tackles. We're going to go right into whip finish. Whip yourself up a little head. Tighten them up. And if you got any real crazy snowshoe fibers, you can sniff them off if you want to be um, picky about it, but I usually will just leave them. But that's pretty much the fly. 
pretty much uh, basically your traditional Catskill kind of style fly. Um, size 18 in an olive with a gray. Um, works great on the BWOs. Um, particularly uh, where I use this fly, um, I generally always fish uh, parachutes and no hackles. Um, but where this fly really shines is uh, in a riffly kind of running water. Uh, it'll allow the fly to stand up a lot more. Uh, with the hackle and the snowshoe on there, I, I never have to hit this thing with floating. Uh, just a couple of false casts and she's ready to rock and roll again. And um, when those olives are coming off, uh, the, coming off in the swifter water, uh, the the riffly water, uh, this baby, this baby will produce for sure. And uh, the the major key with uh, tying Catskill style flies um, that people don't really realize is uh, the wings need to be proportionate as well as the tail, um, and it's all to do with balance. If your fly's out of balance, it'll land on its side. If it's out of balance, it'll land on its head. If it's out of balance it'll also twist your leader when you cast it. Um, so you never want to go too short with your hackle. You never want to go too long with your wings. And you never want to go too long with your tail. Try to keep everything in proportion and easily can be accomplished by using your hook as a gauge. But fish them. Tie these up. Fish them wherever you know uh, BWOs hatch from. Um, I can pretty much get fish on this on a cloudy day, even when the BWOs aren't hatching. Just throw it out there in that riffle, let it come drifting back to me, and one will pop up and gulp. Down it goes. But, hope you enjoyed it. I'm Johnny Utah. Check me out on my blog, www.utahsflycorner.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching.